So this is the third piece that I really wanted to try to get a hold of today. Hi everybody, welcome to or welcome back to Ampersand Unique Gifts. My name is Sarah. Today we're working on part two of our little table makeover. And if you are interested in part one, where we uh, flipped, upcycled, uh, improved some other items, I will put a link to part one in the description of this video. And also, if you are not already a subscriber, but you are interested in upcycle, repurpose, DIY, thrift finds, auction finds, live auction um, walkthroughs, then definitely hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you will be notified every time we upload a new video. So anyway, after a long period of some technical difficulties, uh, I lost a bunch of the footage and I've slowly been able to gather it from here and there. Thank you Google Photos for deciding to update for me and yanking all my videos off of my phone. Anyway, so I was able to grab some stuff, piece it back together, and now let's get in with no additional waiting so you can see what I did to this little table. So what you're seeing here is half of a tabletop. When I flipped it upside down and I took the base off of it to see about the legs, one of the legs fell off and the tabletop split in half. So you're actually catching the second part of uh, stripping. I used the citrus stripper and on part of the table I just went ahead and sanded and I decided when I did the other half of the top of the table and the leaves that I would actually use a stripper. So it was somewhat successful, at least it got me going and I went ahead and stripped as much as I could. Alright, so it's really hard to tell when you're Dealing with this old wood and it's it's so patterned, you know, it has all the grain. It's hard to tell when I'm actually into the wood grain. This is the one piece and then this is the other piece. And so I believe this part is still stain, but it's just so hard to tell when you get in here where's the stain and what is the wood grain and the color of the wood. I've still got some stain right here. But yeah, no, just trying to sand this and get it all clean, but it's hard to tell when I'm just sanding wood away and when I'm actually still working on stain. So the legs were in really good shape. There wasn't any damage. I'm just taking a wire brush and scraping off the rust uh, that was on the bolt. And then I'm going to take some 220 sandpaper and a foam sanding pad. And I'm just going to work a little bit on the legs to get any loose stain off. My goal is not to completely strip them, but just get them ready for paint. So you can tell here that it actually had been glued and it had some old wood glue. So I'm actually going to just take it and I'm going to reinforce and nail in, you know, hammer in any of those nails, make sure everything's tight. And then I'm actually going to put wood glue back in those joints just to reinforce it and make sure that everything is in there. And of course, uh, my glue uh, was left out in the shop over the winter and it did something funky. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cram it all in there with popsicle sticks and then I'm going to uh, kind of clean it up with a rag. Here was a piece that had completely broken off on the skirting. So I did um, put some filler in there and then wood glue over that. So I'll just clean it up and sand it. And here my camera kept falling over. I'm trying to show just where I'm lightly sanding the skirting and then those arms that swing out to hold the drop leaf but my camera keeps continuing to fall over um so here you can just kind of see this and then you can um there's that piece that i glued back in and just kind of filled in where i nailed it together and making sure that it would stay together for the next person and hopefully for another hundred years <laughs> Now that we've got our skirt all sanded and ready, let's get our tabletop put back together. So when it broke into the two pieces, I think it may have actually already have been broken and it was just when I took the skirt off, it gave it the ability to separate. But it is a tongue and groove and unfortunately the tongue on part of it is stuck in the groove in the other part and that was where it actually broke. So I am using my trusty tight bond um, paste because after it's um, winter in the shop it turned gummy but I've been using it all summer and it works just great. So you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm actually spreading that on the edge 
Um, there we go. I just realized that you couldn't see it. Um, but I go all the way down and I poke it down in the groove in the areas where there's not a tongue stuck in there. And I just really wanted to give it an opportunity to work very well and have a connection grab anywhere that the two pieces were going to be able to fit up next to each other. So I just, uh, again, I go the whole length and then I worked on some other additional areas that looked like they might have needed just a little extra stability. And then here he is all in his cast, aka clamps, and I'm just squeezing it together and making sure that it's going to hold. So yeah, um, there it is. And then here it is with its cast off. And I am sanding and just getting um, where that extra glue came out. Some of it kind of squeezed out and was hard to get to with the clamps. But anyway, I'm just going to sand it all smooth. And I'm not, you know, unless you're laying under the table, you're not necessarily going to see this. But I still wanted it to look nice. So we'll flip it over and kind of see what the um, seepage is on the other side. But not only did I have some places where the wood glue came through, no problem, we'll sand it. I actually was a little more concerned about the fact that there was still a big gap in there. So I knew that it was sealed really well with that glue, but I just wanted to close that gap so it didn't have a big dent all the way, a big hole in there. So using quick wood, which is a two-part epoxy type paste wood filler, it has a roll of the one wrapped inside the roll of the other and you just cut it off and then work it around like Play-Doh. And so I just did several different pieces and rolled them into a snake and poked them down in that hole. And I did use a uh, kind of a scraper just to smooth it and make sure that it was in there. And I went the entire length. And then after it actually um, had quite a while there to harden, uh, I think it may have been overnight, then I sanded it down and just made sure that it was all smooth. And by the time that was over, you really couldn't even tell that it was there. So now I just wanted to put the leaves back on, get it ready. I used the original screws. I just had the slotted hole uh, anywhere that I could. And then some of them I had to replace with some other screws, new screws. So now, yeah, put the legs back on it. And um, like I said, the legs were really in great shape. And now that I sturdied up all the rest of the table. Um, I just used the original hardware. It had the original washers and square nuts. And I went ahead and got all four legs back on and got it all ready to get that tabletop. So here it is just sitting there waiting for its tabletop. And on the table, I did clear coat the underneath and I just sprayed it with a clear coat because again, nobody's really going to see it, but I wanted to just make sure that it was good and finished. And here to put the table back on, I did go ahead and these are just some, um, they're actually drywall screws, but I needed something that was a little bit longer and had a little bit more grab because some of the holes were worn out and I needed to do, get a little better grab. And then some of them, I just, I kind of moved uh, but I lined the holes up and used the original places as best as I could. So reach in there. Just why get up when you can just reach over. Um, but here it is. We're going to flip it upside down after we get all of it. I think there's a total of six. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, my goodness. I can't count. Ten screws that are holding that table on. And here it is unpainted. But I'm getting ready to add fusion in the coal black, um, it, it has a built-in sealer. It's really amazing. And you can see here that I think it only, um, you know, would have needed one coat since I am distressing, but I did go ahead and put two coats on there. Um, I covered everywhere around the bottom with two coats and yes, it would have made more sense to do this before I put the tabletop on. Um, but I just wanted to make sure everything went together well in fear of messing something up in my paint job. And then I very carefully went around and I'm just using a Wooster paintbrush. I used the same one for this that I did for the bottom. And I went around on that edge. And the reason I am painting that edge is because I didn't want to deal with trying to strip it and having the whole tabletop be a natural. Um, so I did go around and do that edge everywhere and... Then I took a stress um, 
stress sanded. I de-stressed. Oh my goodness, what is wrong with me? I de-stressed it with a 220 and it is not really laying on its side. I filmed it facing the wrong way, so I rotated the picture, but it is still upright. Um, but I just anywhere that it might have distressed on its own. I didn't want to go extra, but I just wanted it to have a little bit of a distressed look. And then the tabletop, I am using the Waverly Wax in the Antique mixed with water. And this kind of gives it, not only does it seal it a little bit, it also helps darken and protect that wood. And I love the color that it made this wood when I used it. I did do everywhere all over the top, so including even the black edges. I didn't worry about getting it on there. Um, and I did not need to seal the black, but I did just for um, making it even. But anyway, here it is. And I absolutely love the way it turned out. Um, not on camera, but I did end up using the Sweet Pickens top coat in the final coat in matte to seal it. I have three coats on the top there, but I really think that it was worth all this and I love the finished product. So let me know in the comments if you would have saved it too.